I appreciate you or ordering this beautiful day for me here in Payne County. It was a lovely drive over this morning. I suppose that this weather has got some of you thinking about gardens and flower beds and getting outside to do anything. I have some acreage over, <clears throat> over near Stillwell, and I think you will all be able to resonate with my experience on these acres because about 10 of the 10 acres of the property are cleared in pasture. And when I see this weather, I know that there are shrubs and scrubs and vines trying to lessen that 10 acres around all the edges trying to grow in. And in the middle of those pastures, right now, are wonderful little green sticker bushes growing up. And trees and saplings of every kind sprouting from acorns planted and all the rest. It's a lot of work to keep those 10 acres cleared, but I want them cleared because they give me a beautiful view. They allow me to see the wildlife that's out there. But it's work. Some of the stuff that grows out there is really tough, hardy. Some of it is persistent. You can kill it over and over and over and over, and it comes back. Some of it is painful, the thorns and so forth, of the sticker bushes. So what kind of tools do we need to handle this kind of maintenance, this kind of clearing and maintenance that's going to have to match whatever we're fighting against? We're going to need tools that are powerful. I have a little tractor out there with a brush hog mower attachment on it. We're going to need tools that are persistent, that will last a long time. We need tools that are sharp, that can cut through that stuff, especially when I'm clearing new parcels. Boy, it's scary go plowing into a, a bunch of trees. You want something sharp that's going to cut through it. We need tools that are simple, simple to operate. We need tools that are, so, so here we have to decide. Do we want tools that are safe or tools that are fruitful? Because the safer we make them, the less work they're going to do. If you've got a lot of cutting to do and you pull out your little child's round-nosed aluminum <laughs> scissors, you're not going to get very far. They're very safe, but they won't do any work. So I think it's better to have tools that are fruitful, and then we need to learn how to operate them safely. That'll be our responsibility. Now, you didn't think that it was going to be an agricultural lesson this morning, but... Jesus gives us a beautiful image today in this episode from the Gospel of zeal for the Lord's house and clearing it out. He's not running around. He hasn't lost his temper. They're asking him for a sign without noting that him doing what he's doing is the sign. He's upsetting apple carts. Actually, pigeon carts, I guess. He's clearing the house of things that don't belong, things that are less worthy than the pure worship of God, and making it ready. We are in the Lenten season. Our opening collect this morning reminds us of the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving that mark this time. And those are tools for us to use to clear this house, the Lord's house, we, you are, I am, everyone we see, 
is the Lord's house. This is the temple of the Lord. The Holy Spirit dwells in us by choice. And we know the kinds of pests that grow in the house. We know the kinds of plants that are trying to encroach the cleared spaces. We know that some of the sins that we face are themselves powerful. Some of them are powerful enough to ruin relationships in our lives. Some of them are powerful enough to ruin the relationship we have with God, not from His side, but from ours. We also know, if we've reached any age at all, that some of the sins that we face are persistent. We root them out and root them out and root them out, and they keep coming back. We need tools. Tools that are powerful, tools that are persistent, tools that are sharp. The Scripture tells us the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, able to cut through to bone and marrow. We need tools that are simple. The church gives us these tools. God himself equips us. First and foremost, we have the Holy Spirit who dwells in this house, who motivates us to clear it, to keep it clear. Is there a more powerful tool than that? The Holy Spirit? who can root out sin from our life if we will but cooperate with Him. And speaking of spirits, we have our angel. Do you remember? We have a guardian angel. God gives us the gift of an angel to protect us, to help us. Call on the guardian angel to help us. A powerful tool, a powerful ally. We have from the Holy Spirit, the gift of the church. Is the church just a club or something? It's just some human organization? It is also a human organization, but it is a divine institution. God himself has given us the church. The Holy Spirit guides the church. The Holy Spirit protects the church from preaching or teaching error so that we can rely on what the church teaches. And the church gives us the Scriptures, the Word of God, and also the Catechism, another powerful tool. If we need to identify which of these plants have to go, we can count on the Scriptures and the Catechism to help us know what is true and what is false, what is good and what is evil. We don't have to rely on Facebook. In fact, <laughs> this may be news. It won't be, I'm kidding. We shouldn't rely on Facebook. Is there anything more treacherous than that? Social media to, to guide your life by? Oh my goodness. The Bible and the Catechism are reliable guides and we will find contained in them, again, what we heard in the Scripture this morning, the Ten Commandments. Not the Ten Recommendations, the Ten Commandments. Why would God bother to give us Ten Commandments? Since His Son died to set us free, if we're free, why do we need Ten Commandments? We need Ten Commandments because authentic freedom is in obedience to God. If we say to ourselves, or there's any voice within us that says... I don't have to listen to God. Or I can make my own mind up about this or that or the other thing that God himself has taught. That voice is not coming from the Holy Spirit. That voice is not well-intentioned and planning to lead us to God. That voice is leading us a field of God into the woods. So we have the Ten Commandments and we have the sacraments. Because when I'm clearing ground out at the acreage that I have, 
the thing that I often do is forget to eat and drink. You get so wrapped up in it until finally you're just about to fall over starving and your throat is so dry you can't breathe. We need to be fed along the journey so that we can remain strong enough to continue the maintenance of God's house, the rooting out, the tearing up, the clearing away, so that God himself can grow in us. The Eucharist is our food for the journey. The sacrament of reconciliation is a tremendous, powerful tool in our task of keeping God's house clear. <clears throat> clear. Those little rooms at the back of the church, those confessionals, are rooms of power, rooms of grace, rooms not to be afraid of, rooms to look forward to. There we can go to root out again, no matter how many times it takes for the rest of our life, the sins that keep us from God. So we have much to celebrate, brothers and sisters, because we have a common task as sinners who are loved by God, desired by God to be in his presence. We have a common task and we have common tools. And the tools we have from God are powerful, they're persistent, they're sharp, they're simple, not easy, but simple. And they will help us keep God's house clear until the last day when we enter into his joy.